Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I want to share with you this fabulous baseball inspired painting. This was inspired by a little brush in our community who's going to be not able to play baseball this summer. So I was asked to paint that baseball so he could feel the joy of his summer sports. And I just thought this would be a great painting for anybody that really, really celebrates the sport and wants to remember those summer days. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to paint this painting. So let's start by looking at the materials for this fabulous summer painting. I have a nine by 12 canvas board. These are pre-gessoed, ready to paint. You don't need to do another thing to it. They're ready to go. Over here I have heavy bodied acrylic paint. I have yellow ochre, I have burnt sienna, phthalo green, a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of cad red medium, um, Mars black, and this very important stuff, acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is gonna really let me do my scumble. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in a colored ground. That's a color that I put over the whole canvas, and that way I can do my scumbling glaze over it to create this really cool effect that I love about this painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of green. This is a palette knife. You could do this with, you know, another tool like a, a, a brush or some other way of mixing it, but I like having palette knives around for that. I'm going to use a lot of this because I'm going to be painting the whole canvas with this base color. So this is the phthalo green and the yellow ochre. I'm just kind of mixing those together so that they're mostly mixed. I'm going to clean off my knife here. Get a nice wide brush. This is a two inch stiff white nylon. All right, these are not expensive and they do a nice quick job of painting canvas. You notice that I drug that extra water off my brush. It's important on acrylic paintings not to let them get too waterlogged even though they're water-based media and that's why using brushes for acrylic paint is so helpful. And I'm gonna paint this whole canvas this color. I'm trying to cover all the white. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is like just an undercoating that's going to glow through and help everything pop. It's also going to help my paint stick. Acrylic really likes to stick to acrylic. I'm just brushing back and forth to make it even. But again here, it's not crazy important. Now if I'm running out of the color, I can still go back and mix it on the brush, see like this. So it's not a big, big, big deal. All right, there we go. Let's rinse out our brushes, dry them, put them to the side. I'm gonna dry my canvas so I can sketch in baseball. So once this is completely dry, you can sketch in your baseball. I'm gonna wanna put my baseball just slightly off the center of the canvas not too close to the bottom and not too close to the side. And I'm gonna do about a four and a half inch circle. Now what I found did that great for me is this tub <laughs> of grounds, but my recommendation is just find objects around you that are round and about four and a half inches a circle. If your baseball is five inches or your baseball is, you know, four inches, it's not really gonna mess with the composition of the painting. I have sharpened kids chalk here. And I'm going to just sort of trace around this object. Now, I have trouble doing the other hand trace, underhand tracing. So what I like to do, right, is come here and reposition this and just sort of make sure by flipping, then I have this placed exactly how I want it, where I want it, and it's round. Do, 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 do. You could do this with a string. There's a lot of ways you can do this. This is just to make sure that you've got a fairly 
round shape that you feel good about. And you'll notice that the chalk erases really easily. So this will all vanish in the painting. You can use like a cereal bowl or all kinds of things. The other thing that I want to sketch in is I want to make sure that I remember that I have light right here. This is going to help me determine that where my lip lighting is on my baseball and all of that. Now, this is a number six silver stencil from my Art Sherpa line. And these stencils are natural bristles. That's what you're looking for with a flat front. I'm going to get this wet because that helps soften them. And then I'm going to take the extra water out of it because if they're waterlogged, it won't work very well. All right, so you want to have it just be just a little bit wet, but not soaking wet. So you want to feel the moisture, but not feel a flood. And I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and a little of my phthalo green. And you can see I'm sort of swirling around creating a very dark color. Another thing I can do is take this glazing liquid and add it here. And that's going to help make it transparent and keep my paint from drying out. So see how I've just coated the tips of the bristles? I'm going to come here and do this circular scumbling motion. Let's get some more. Circular scumbling motion. All right. Just scumbling this along. You can see this is creating sort of a diffused glaze that's darkening the outer edges of my canvas. A little more brown, a little more green, a little more glaze, just keep going. So you want your darkest to be out here at the edge, and then it's going to get brighter as it comes to the middle. Just keep going all the way around. If you've done this with me before, you know it blends out and you lose a lot of the brush strokes and things as you keep working the scumble. You can do stencils with this style of brush and scumbles and all kinds of things. Here we go. I like to make sure there's not too much glaze. I'm going to darken this all around. So many layers of this to do to get this really cool bokeh, fun, blended photography effect. But I wanted something really special for you guys to be able to paint. That felt like a really nice painting that you could do. All right, there we go. I'm going to get this wet again. And again, I'm going to take off the extra, extra water. Whoop, a little feather on there because you don't want it soaked. Mixing my dark color. And just dusting this around. All right, I'm just dusting this around. Now, as that dries, what I can do is I can come here and I'm going to just add a little of my yellow ochre to my dirty brush. It'll be a smidge of green. Oh, and I could probably put out some white. Help me lighten my colors. There we go. I like that. Once we have that, we're going to just keep dusting, 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 dusting with this lighter color. This is how our light source is going to really come in. Now I'm just blending these two areas together. And this creates a very soft, diffused 
kind of photographic effect. It's a little phthalo green, a little yellow ochre. So what gets new painters is not spending enough time just blending the background and letting this develop in its layers. It's around the side here. I'd like to get just a little more yellow. Let's come right here and just blend softly scumbling in. This yellow, this is very far off diffuse light. And get a little more white on the brush like this. So I'm just adding more white. You can kind of see how this looks. Just create these soft values. They're going to travel in the distance. And you can see as the brush gets drier, it kind of blends it out. And that's what you're looking for. You know, a little bit here, just creating a little sense of distant, blurry atmosphere. Woo, had a little slip there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and finish this really dramatic edge. Get some just green. Glaze if you need it. Might add a little brown to it. I'm going to make sure that this field feels like a warm summer's day. You can hear Different bugs chirping, flying, birds singing, kids laughing, and the distant sound of a game. So I'll push this back here. That's what we're doing. This might be easier for you on a table. You may find it's just easier for you on a table. Just a little brown and a little green. Just coming around the edge here. A little green, a little brown. All right. Making it work. There we go. See, I'm just working the glazing medium. And that's letting me get very, very diffused feeling all around the edges. This is going to be real nice when I when I'm layering in. I'm going to get some just glaze. Really nice when I'm layering in my grass. See, this is just the glaze. I'm softening those areas between lines. If you like this, we have this uh, Beauty and the Beast background and a few other backgrounds that are like this. All right, flipping the canvas so that I'm working to the edge that I have good angle on because I don't want to wear out my body. I don't want to wear out my body. You can always add glaze to blend or soften the line. Just keep dusting. All right. A little bit up here. And just some brown.
little brown, just doing the outside, outside edge. Some nice gradation that you've created. That's a great way to start. It's good to rinse these out. I don't like to rinse them out above the ferrule. And make sure that you do that. You lay them flat and you use soap and water and you clean things out really, really well. Let's lay in the first layer of the baseball. So I'm going to get a nice square brush. This is called a bright. This is a number eight bright. You could use a six, you could use a four. You just want a brush that it gives you a nice sense of control. I'm dipping in the water and I'm dragging off the extra. And I'm going to pull out a little of my brown. And I'm going to add a smidge of black to it, and maybe even a little yellow right here at this yellow ochre. Probably need to put out some more yellow ochre. All right, putting out some more yellow ochre. Get a little white. Now I'm going to paint in this whole baseball with this kind of dark, dirty brown color. And this is going to help you create that beautiful, round, in the summer feeling your ball will feel like it's been played with. And I think that's important on this, right? Breathe in, breathe out. I'm coming on the edge of my brush to get a nice line here. And I can just paint this whole ball in this first color. And you can see how the guiding line might help you draw a rounder circle than you might expect to freehand. All right. So see, it's a little bit streaky. And that's okay because there's so many layers. If you have some chalk where you don't want it, you can get a smaller brush. This is a number four and a little bit of clean water on your brush. And just very carefully come around and erase. See how easily that erases? And no, it's not cheating not to freehand. You don't have to freehand everything. Tools are still part of the artist experience. Oh, I might keep that brush. It's a nice grass brush. Let's put in some distant faded grass. So I'm going to come in, come into my colors. I'm going to get all my green here, mix it into my yellow, and I'm going to make some distant blades of grass here. These are kind of soft and Blending them on the edge of my brush. And you can see using the glaze lets them feel a little bit see-through. A little more ochre on that. And that's nice because it says, oh, these are far away. And I'm kind of curving them around. And the idea is, is that this ball here, right? This little ball. It's in the grass. So like... Just softly, I imagine just a curve, and these are distant, faded little blades of grass. That's the perspective, right? Now you can tuck in a little of the green here if you like. Just make sure that it's showing around the... When you glaze, that lets you get away with a whole bunch of stuff, doesn't it? Just blending and painting. Make sure I have some grass coming up behind here. Distant grass. Using the glaze. There we go. These are soft lines. And as I'm coming forward, I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna. And my green on the smaller brush, I'm going to pull a little bit of this into this distant grass. Look like a very light on my pressure. Look how light that is. And I don't make the whole stroke. I don't just go grass line, grass line. I do a little bit. 
a little bit. Because that's how the eye would see it. It wouldn't see all of it. It would just see a little bit. So just little bits of distant, faded grass. Right up into the dark here. There we go. Now that this is drying, I can get my number eight bright out again, and I'm going to paint another layer of that. I'm going to put a little more yellow into the mix I had over here, which was a little brown, a little black, right? A little white. I'm going to add some more yellow into that, and then a lot more white. Look at that. You don't want it to be too bright. So if it is, get a smidge. See how little of that right there? And mix it in. Because this needs to be a slightly lighter color than what's there. Now, we're going to say that the sunlight is hitting at the hottest spot right here. So what we're going to do is very lightly. This is like a dry brush. I don't have a lot of water in my brush. I'm coming around. I'm letting a lot of the canvas show through. That's okay. And brushing down. Really so don't paint down here yet. Don't paint ahead of me. Just stay with me. We're going to brush down. See my strokes are kind of curved. That's going to help me tell the story of this ball. I'm going to just keep this going, right? Come on, this is great. When I'm down here at the bottom, I'm putting very little of my color. It's going to be darker at the top, or well, more color at the top, more I should say. I'm adding more white. And I'm going to, again, soft, soft, soft. Just brushing, brushing, brushing this next layer. Next layer. Put out a little more white if you need it. I know I do. One more on the brush here. A little more yellow. Make sure it's just lighter. So here we go. We're just right around. One of the things you might want to do is paint something like a baseball bright white, but they're not. They have a lot of character. Hands have held them. Look at the dirt. I've had an experience. You've got to show that story. I'm going to come across with a stroke. See, everything I'm doing is about talking about the, the shape of this. And see, I'm leaving this much darker down here. Get a little glaze if you need it. I'm going to get a lot more white. And now I'm going to add more ochre. Let's come right up here in the top again. There we go. It's starting to become a thing, isn't it? This is also a great way to understand about painting lighting. If you need to add a little of your CAD to this, go ahead. It's cadmium yellow or just a bright yellow that you have. There we go. Come right here. There we go. There we go. Just this nice painting, right? There's a little yellow in it. There's a little warmth of the sunlight. Brush just a bit of this down if you want to. You definitely, definitely want this texture kind of coming through on the main part. If you're having a little trouble getting control, you can always grab a little glaze, a little water, and brush around the edge here. See? You have the power. We're going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to rinse this out. And let's come here and get a little of our green and brown. We're going to be coming in while our ball is drying because. We're going to add just a little bit more of this dark color here. Get glaze if you need it. This should be much darker than the paint it's going over. You're going to want to just lightly, you can see how lightly I am brushing this in, brushing this in. 
brushing up. You can totally do this. You got this. You make this beautiful painting. So you notice how I'm kind of curving this brush stroke. Now I'm going to come back with some grass in just a second that layers over the front, but I'm letting these layers build in because they're going to create a world for me that's very deep and rich. And that's how you build paintings. So I'm going to check this with my hair dryer. I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer so that I can put in my lines for the stitching and my final highlight and my red stitches and then I can put in the rest of my grass and then we're done. So we're really almost there. How you doing? Breathe in. Breathe out. It's summer. It's baseball time. Things are good. All right. Now once it's dry, I'm going to get my kids chalk out again that I've sharpened and I'm going to lightly guide myself here for the lines that are in the baseball. And I'm going to do the lines and they're going to curve like this. So this is where I'm saying the stitching is going to go because these are hand stitched. I'm going to curve that line. I'm going to curve that line. You don't need to take this all the way down to the bottom. There's going to be so much grass here. You don't have to worry about that. Get your smaller brush out. If you like where those lines are, you can go ahead and get a little of your brown paint and a little of your black paint very lightly, just ever so lightly, put in a small thin line here. And then right here again too. Small thin line. Once that's in, once you have that in, inside your brush, and you're going to get an even smaller brush, interestingly enough. Teeny tiny little brush. I'm going to get this small brush. You can get a small detail round, any brush you want. This happens to be a double zero bright, but you can see the size of it here. And I'm going to take a smidge of my brown over to my red, and maybe even, look at this, just a, just a, See how that's just a dot of my black? Because right? I don't want it to be the brightest red I have. I'm going to use that for the pop. So once I have that, how I like that, if it gets creeping up your brush, you can always wipe it off like that. So it's on a little bead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, come out about a quarter of an inch, and do a brush stroke. Now, I'm going to come out the same distance from this side on the right hand side and I'm going to curve up another little brush stroke but it's going to be slightly positioned above the first one. Then I'm going to come up, oh gosh about a quarter of an inch and do another one. Tuck this one so that they seem like they're overlapped. Okay, kind of dry brushing that in. Brushing that in. All right, there we go. Right to the end. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come over. And I'll try to also position on this side so that they're kind of matched up. You don't have to be perfect. The ball makers have to be, but you don't have to be. You're being arty. You're painting how you feel about it. I grab some more of the glazing liquid just to improve the flow. And I'm just using this side to sort of help me eye this side. Once I have that eyed in, the next thing I'm going to do is get some just, just the red. It's so bright. See how bright that is? I'm going to come and just add a little of that to my strokes. It's helping. No idea that there was so much going on in these laces, but there is. You wanting them to feel very baseball-y. And then I'm going to get a little of my yellow. 
in red. And just touch some of the laces with this brighter color and see how that creates some dimensionality. They're not boring. Not everyone, not everything the same. With the brush still dirty with red, pull some black onto your brush. And then just show the stitch holes. You can even talk a little bit about where the stitching ends. Showing the stitch holes. Very important part of this little process. Rinse that out. If you feel good about that, if you're happy about that, you can get your number eight out. I think actually I'm going to use my number four again. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to get some just white. Just white. And I'm going to come make a hot spot of light. And see this is dry brushed right up here at the top. And I'm softly diffusing it out so that you can really feel a little yellow on that, that's fun too. Really feel too much yellow. I always wipe it off if I get too much and just, still too much, rinse out. <laughs> get a little more white. Never worry about that stuff, you can always work it out. But I was just trying to say a little warm light there. All right, so now we have this sort of diffuse, kind of hot spot on our ball where you can really feel the light is hitting it, it's going. I'm going to start really pulling everything into my grass. So I'm back into the green and brown again, maybe a little glazing medium so it's nice and ready to paint. Dark color and let's start taking these brush strokes that we've been doing, doing shorter little ones where the, the ball is sitting in the grass. See how we're doing? We're on the edge of the brush. You can cross over what you painted because the grass blades certainly would, wouldn't they? If there was a ball nestled in the grass. I'm going to get some just brown here. I'm going to keep going. Just a little diffused brown and green. There we go, just pulling that around. And suddenly it starts to exist in its space, doesn't it? We'll rinse this out a little bit. All right, now this is gonna be about pulling some bright highlights and pulling this all together. So I'm gonna take my green over to my yellow and I'm gonna start getting kind of a a brighter green, right? I'm going to definitely touch a little bit of that here. Coming up here. And remember how we were doing this? We weren't doing a line, a line. You know, people want to go line, 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 line. We're not doing that. We're being much more line, 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 line. Be soft. That's the success in pieces like this. It's just having very little pressure coming from my shoulder through my arm into the brush, into the canvas. You notice that my bristles aren't bent over very far. My lines are very soft. Just enjoying this. This is where the sunlight would be hitting this grass, right? Enjoying this little green. I love really taking, curving this and telling the story the way the ball might be placed. Like something that you could discover or find. I'm going to rinse out my brush a little bit. 
want to get some just brown. I might even add some yellow ochre to it. I want to add some of these dry grasses here and there. Right? Dry grasses here and there from the heat. Since our focus is the ball, you know, you want to think about how you're putting the grass here. You want it to feel real and full. You can even kind of brush a soft, abstract little spot out here. So if it's the grass is laid down. And you're just going to want to look at that and take that where you think it should go. I'm going to rinse this out. I'm going to give just one more highlight, interestingly enough, in this space. Take my green and my bright, bright yellow and grab a little white. It's going to be quite bright, quite strong, and I'm going to just put a little of this in. This would be where the light's really whipping through our grass. How are we feeling about that? And up over here. Never knew such a simple painting had so much thought that might go into it. And I'm sure this painting has a lot of love that's going into it. It's going to go somewhere that really enjoys it and hang on a wall and help somebody dream of summer days. Listen, I hope you had fun with today's painting. I hope you learned a couple new things about art that you didn't know before. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. Share with me on social media, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, our website, all the places. And I wanna see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.